We continue on with our Back to School series as local schools in the North Shire get set to reopen for another school year. Today, it's on to the Long Trail School in Dorset. Long Trail School opened in 1975, and so will be celebrating its 50th anniversary next year. An independent school, it offers instructions for students in grades 6 through 12. It was the first school in Vermont to offer an international baccalaureate program, part of an international network of schools. It will also open this year with its largest ever enrollment. To learn more about what's new this year at Long Trail, we sat down with the head of school, Colin Igo. Uh, really excited for the school year. Thanks for coming out to visit. And there's always a lot going on at school, as you know. Um, you know, this year we have it's the biggest Long Trail School has ever been in the history of Long Trail School. 257 students, grades six through 12. Um, our largest graduating class, we have a graduating class of uh, the class of 2025, only 39 students, which is the biggest class that we've ever had. And then. Um, all the way from sixth grade through 12th grade, really healthy enrollment, including a seventh grade that has 60 students um, and a wait list, actually. So that's the, um, the biggest that we can be there and uh, great, great kids, great families. And so, so that's exciting and always you know, looking forward to welcoming them on Monday uh, when we officially kick off with students in the building. Some of the new things, you know, there's strengthening of programs and then there are always new things that you're trying out. And of course, as we enter this school year and uh, an election that's coming up, but also just thinking about how our students are prepared to enter the world once they leave Long Trail. We've been doing a lot of thinking uh, about leadership and civic engagement and what does it mean to be an engaged citizen, right? What does it mean to, um, to engage with people in dialogue and have civil discourse, right? What does it mean to contribute to your community? What does it mean to lead? And, and leadership, not just in position or title, but to help move a community forward. Right? We, we talk about that a lot. And so we're really starting to strengthen that program, including tomorrow, actually Friday, um, before school starts, all the seniors will come for what we're calling our senior leadership retreat. And so Friday, um, and then we'll be on campus, and then we'll all head over to Merck Forest and Farmland, do some, some leadership activities at Merck Forest and Farmland, camp out Friday night up there, um, hike up, camp out, hike back Saturday. And so for about 24 hours, a little more than 24 hours, we'll be engaged with that whole group of 39 seniors, a handful of faculty, myself and Sam Krause, I'm kind of taking the, the, the lead on developing that program. And really Sam Krause has done a tremendous amount of work leading up to that. But getting them to start to think about their role as leaders in the community, as 12th graders. And so that's you know the, the, the end. 12th, but how do we build those skills all the way from sixth grade on up um, and, and really thinking carefully about how they engage in this community, not just the Long Trail community, but you know, in the North Shire, um, in their house, in their uh, classroom, on their sports team. How do you help move that forward? A big piece of that that I think relates to a lot of what we're seeing in the greater world is how do you have honest civil conversations, right? And so we're trying to give opportunities for students to practice that. Um, to fail, to practice it again, to get better and better at it. So when they graduate here, they're ready to, to, to really not only lead meaningful lives, but contribute uh, to the world, the wider world. So that's an exciting, you know, it's, it's in the, the core of who Long Trail is, but really strengthening and sharpening and honing that and creating programming around that's pretty exciting, in this, this leadership and civic engagement. So was that a direct outgrowth of the fact that this is an election year or is it would have happened anyway? It would have happened anyway, but I think there's, unique opportunities in an election year. Like for instance, we will be inviting our local candidates here to school to model what does it look like to have to engage in civil discourse. I hope that they all take us up on that offer and you know whether that's a night of civil discourse or conversations with students, we have often have some of our local politicians who've come visit not during the election moment, but what an opportunity this year to have them come and sit and talk about ideas and exchange ideas and be respectful. So Things like that I think are, are um, helpful that it's an election season, but regardless, these are skills that we know are crucial for students to possess and um, I think can just be strengthened when there is an election happening. Um, I was wondering, a couple of uh, educators I've talked to in recent weeks have uh, said that there's still some lingering COVID uh, issues kicking around, like whether it's truancy or students who are still testing or reading or yeah, math 
below grade level, mm. but they still haven't completely recovered. Has that been anything you've been talking about here with your faculty members, or has that not been an issue here for the students that uh, you've attracted? It's a really good question. I don't know if anyone can say with certainty what is exact causation or correlation um, or residual from COVID, but certainly, of course, any, any school is going to be paying close attention to how students are behaving and performing, right? And so I think we're, we're really fortunate that we've got incredible teachers who care deeply about those individuals. So we're, a strength of the school is that if we see something that isn't, isn't adding up, whether it's you know, academic performance or behavioral, or, um, or certainly if a student wasn't you know, attending school, that we, we act pretty quickly to give them the supports that they need. And in fact, we're at our in-service, uh, full faculty in-service right now, and we're just talking about that. How do we support students? How do we make sure every student feels a sense of belonging? And, in our mission is to achieve your your individual potential and so really laser focused on that that comes about a, a variety of ways so i don't think i here i've seen patterns of things not patterns of you know low performance our students i think whether if we look at standardized test scores and sats and acts they're really really strong in fact the strongest highest sat scores in the state um, of this rising senior class and uh they're attending school, they're attending school, you know, and the, the of course you have a sickness here or there, but um, I'd say patterns we feel pretty good about where we are, but you know, of course that's never, that's a mountain without a top, right? You wanna make sure you're still continuing to support kids. And uh, the cell phone question, I know we talked about that earlier this year, of any changes on that policy there? Yeah, so I mean that, when we met in, I guess maybe that was May, April or May, um, our full faculty read The Anxious Generation by Jonathan Haidt over the summer, and actually right now, in fact, momentarily, we're about to engage in our first set of discussions around how we want to take that information and that book, and if there are changes we want to make here, what those could look like. Our cell phone policy right now is the same, that middle school six through eight cannot have a cell phone. Um, when they come to school, if they bring a phone with them, they drop it at their advisor. In the morning, they pick it up at the end of the day nine through 12 can't use their cell phone without permission from a, a teacher. Uh, I think we'll, I, I would imagine that that policy might evolve, but in you know typical long trail fashion, we want that to be a, conver a really thoughtful conversation that also brings students and parents into that conversation. Uh, you know, personally, I think, and we've talked about this quite a bit, that, um, that we're going to look at cell phones in the way that we look at schools who had smoking rooms in the 70s, right? That will say, wow, that was really short. We let young people have those things all day in class. Well, so I feel like we're getting there. We also want to do it in a way that we make sure we're, we're bringing people into the conversation and moving there together. And it feels like we're in a good place now with more to come. We've got um, an academic experience that is helping kids grow and realize their full potential and we're a community that cares a lot about um, high expectations for both academics but also your, your character who you are and we're really supportive and, and engaging and so I think those two things done done together create wonderful experiences um, too often, I, I talk about this a lot with our parents, too often those are seen as being in competition, that you either have high expectations or you're a warm, compassionate place. And it's actually that the balance of those two is what I think brings about the best student experiences and then ultimately outcomes. I think we're a great school. And so we want to continue to try to serve as many kids as we can and give them wonderful experience so that they can they can grow and thrive. No, you know, I, one thing that I, I, I'm starting my third year here and one thing that continues to amaze me is the amount of people who come to campus and they maybe have lived here for a long time and say, wow, I've never been to school, or I didn't know this place is such a, a gem. And it is a gem, but we don't want to be a hidden gem. So I guess the thing that I was, you know, we, we are a school, you know, in and of and for the community, and we want to have opportunities for folks to come visit. And we also want our students and, 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 and all of us here to go out into the community. And so... You know, for folks who are watching who aren't as familiar with Long Trail, we'd welcome you to come to campus and come see a, a, a sporting event or come visit classes or come to a theater performance or a musical performance. And it's a pretty magical place. And I think the more people that know about Long Trail and can come um, see Long Trail, the better. Long Trail School's opening day was Tuesday, August 27th. 
Upcoming programs in the series will include conversations with the school superintendent of the Bennington Rutland Supervisory Union, the principal of Arlington Memorial High School, the principal of the Mountain School in One Hall, and the head of the Red Fox School in Manchester. For the GNET TV News Project, I'm Andrew McKeever.